The Lord spoke to Moses that same day and said to him, Climb this mountain of the Abarim, Mount Nebo, in the country of Moab, opposite Jericho, and view the Canaan which I am giving to the Israelites as their domain. Die on the mountain you have climbed, and be gathered to your people, as your brother Aaron died on Mount Hor and was gathered to his people. You may only see the country from outside. You cannot enter it, the country which I am giving to the Israelites. Wherever we may have traveled, whatever landscape our eyes may have already seen, our encounter with this blessed land of arid waste and fertile fields, oases and deserts, gentle waters and bare mountains, is a unique encounter that transcends time and even the very places preserved by sacred geography. Over the centuries, this expand of land which Moses and the chosen people admired from the two summits of Mount Nebo at the end of the Exodus has welcomed thousands of men and women, pilgrims making their own personal exodus from everyday routine to seek the living memory of Christ. The Holy Scriptures identify this mountain, today in the territory of Jordan, about 30 kilometers from Ammon and 50 from Jerusalem, as the place where Moses contemplated the promised land and ended his life. According to the tradition narrated by St. Jude, his body was buried by the Archangel Michael in a tomb unknown to the Israelites. The first settlements in the city of Nebo date to remote ancient times. In the 6th century, in parallel with the development of the monastery, a radical reconstruction of the church lent it the three-aisle structure we can still admire today. The basilica, continually enlarged to include new liturgical spaces and chapels, remained active even after the Islamic conquest up until the late Middle Ages. Several archaeological excavations were undertaken at the start of the 19th century, and this activity received great impetus when the Franciscans managed to gain possession of the summit of Mount Nebo in 1932, thanks to the enterprising brother Girolamo Miaich. Practically speaking, work was never completely interrupted, except during the World War. In 1963, the custody decided to cover the ruins to give pilgrims an opportunity to pray while remaining inside the sanctuary. Inside the sanctuary, at the head of the southern aisle, a mosaic depicting a simple entwined cross commemorates the prophet Moses. Other splendid mosaics can be admired on the floor and along the walls. In the former baptistry, in 1976, archaeologists discovered a magnificent mosaic depicting a hunting and pastoral scene hidden beneath a floor that had saved it from otherwise certain iconoclastic destruction. Ascribed to the school of Madaba, the diaconicon features an inscription dating it to the year 425 of the Arab province, corresponding to 531 AD, during the episcopacy of Elijah. Today, the memorial of Moses at Mount Nebo, with the treasures that have been brought to light, especially the 6th century mosaics, is certainly one of the most important and most visited sanctuaries of Transjordan, and it is also a pleasant place to stay in and reread pages of the Bible. Thanks to the efforts of Franciscan archaeologists in Jordan, we can identify various renowned biblical sites. The excavation of Machairus, the fortress where Herod Antipas, at the wish of his illicit wife Herodias, ordered the beheading of John the Baptist, has helped reconstruct an important page of Gospel geography. The identification of the vast expanse of ruins at Umm er Razas has allowed another name to be added to the biblical map. We know from the inscriptions we have found that these are the ruins of a biblical site, a Christian site, completely Christian, especially during the Islamic period, but with a name that also has an importance in the story of Muhammad and the early relations between the Christian and Islamic communities. It is the city of Maifa, where, according to the first life of Muhammad, a Christian monk prophesied the arrival 
of Muhammad and his preaching. The exceptional craftsmanship of the mosaics, discovered in the numerous churches dating from the 6th, 7th and 8th centuries, provides valuable testimony to the presence of Christianity in the region. Of special interest is the mosaic decorating the floor of the St. Stephen's Church complex, which for its rich inscriptions and refined motifs was recently declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. The work is valued for the geographical illustrations depicting cities of Transjordan and Chisjordan. The production of mosaicists in Madaba is vast. Especially worth of note are the mosaics of the Church of the Virgin erected on the Hippolytus Hall, a rich dwelling near the Roman road. The central medallion contains a single prayer. If you want to look at Mary, Virgin Mother of God, and at Christ whom she generated, Universal King, Only Son of the Only God, purify your mind, flesh and works. May you purify God's people with your prayer. The masterpiece mosaic of the region dates back to the second half of the 6th century. It is found in the Greek Orthodox Church of St. George in Madaba, and splendidly reproduces the map of the entire Middle East, from Tyre and Sidon to the Nile, from the Mediterranean to the Desert of the East, with detailed descriptions of Palestine, Syria, the Jordan Valley, and above all, Jerusalem. This biblical and geographical map of the Holy Land, the oldest known to us, was designed to guide the pilgrims of old in the stages of their journey. Simple and suggestive indications point out the route which winds between streams and deserts, mountains and fertile plains, touching, in the part of the map that has survived up to our own time, 156 toponyms. Colorful symbols mark important cities and small settlements, oases and sanctuaries, characteristic fauna and landscapes. Mount Nebo, besides being a sanctuary of Arabia, that is, of the province of Arabia, was also the preeminent sanctuary of Madaba. Thus, Madaba's inhabitants were proud of this sanctuary. It was almost certainly a priest who had the bright idea of commissioning the city's mosaicists to decorate the floor of his church with the vision of Moses. From Mount Nebo, the contemplation of the Promised Land is firmly rooted in hope in the Old and New Testaments. Mount Nebo is the starting point of this journey into the Holy Land, which proceeds toward the places entrusted to the custody of the sons of Francis of Assisi, amidst the lands where the new, unstoppable, living message of Jesus sprung forth along the itinerary of the history of salvation designed by a God who preceded us and always accompanies us. Here, on the heights of Mount Nebo, I begin this stage of my jubilee pilgrimage. I think of the great figure of Moses and the covenant which God made with him on Mount Sinai. I give thanks to God for the ineffable gift of Jesus Christ, who sealed the new covenant with his blood and brought the law to fulfillment. To him who is the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, to him I dedicate every step of this journey which I make through the land which was his. The voyage to the Holy Land is unique and cannot be compared with any other form of pilgrimage. Coming to the Holy Land means encountering Christ. The Holy Land is a fifth gospel. It is where the stones speak of Jesus, narrate his story, speak about the revelation of God, God's only revelation to man. This has always been its meaning, and today it takes on even greater value. The Franciscans' task is to help pilgrims not only to welcome them or to be present at the holy sites, but also to walk along this itinerary of faith which is very important.